as of the recording of this video, I have an odometer reading of 6,974 miles. And this is gonna be a review about my experience up to date. It's hard to see, but 6,974. And you can see one item I've mentioned in the past in my videos is the reflection off of the screen here. Uh, it's not angled, so it's kind of one of the challenge points that you have when you're driving if you're trying to see a part of your screen that you uh, have in that corner, it's not very helpful. The idea here is to make a video, give you some feedback about my experience, talk to you about what I've seen so far driving the right Rivian, and uh, to go into a little bit more detail. If you're new to this channel, I talk about my experience with the Rivian truck, I talk about real estate and other business ideas. So stay tuned and we'll get into this. Thank you guys. Since I made my last video, there have been two hurricanes in Florida, two. And they didn't just come to Florida, they came to Central Florida and I happen to live in Central Florida. The first one was Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian, uh, well, if you, if you follow my channel, you realize that I have quite a bit of property and a lot of it happens to be situated in Central Florida. And I was very fortunate with Hurricane Ian when it came, um, it came on the west coast of Florida and it wiped out a huge area there. And uh, I, I, I really feel for the families over there. Uh, we were very fortunate that it didn't affect our family. So, so thank goodness there. And then I've been traveling a lot for work. I own an engineering company. We do plastic injection molding and we design products for lots of companies. I own companies all around the world that we do manufacturing for. And I've been traveling quite a bit. So I have not prioritized you and I have not prioritized the Rivian videos. I apologize. I'm going to try to get back to YouTube here and, um, you know, share my experiences as, as I'm living them and seeing them. Additionally, we had Hurricane Nicole come to Central Florida, and that was a lightweight hurricane, uh, but at the same time, it still knocked down trees, took out fences, and like I said, I got a lot of properties and I've been dealing with some of those issues. Um, so I guess you could say, be careful what you wish for because it might actually come true. All right, enough about that. Let's talk about the Rivian. That's why you're here today. You want to hear about the review. So I have almost 7,000 miles on this, on this truck. And my experience has been overall really good. I've I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I think I made a good decision buying the Rivian and uh, taking ownership and driving it. I really enjoy it. And still to this day, I, I took delivery on May 31st and we are middle of November. So it's been several months since I've had the truck and I drive around everywhere and people still don't recognize the truck. And so to me, I, I find it kind of fascinating that I get the same questions like who makes that truck and what's your range on that truck and who, where is that truck made? And I'm like, yeah, it's made in Illinois. So that's, that's kind of interesting to me. Um, I like the novelty. It's, it's exciting and it doesn't get old to me because I really enjoy driving this uh, electric truck and basically being a, a brand ambassador. It's, it's been fun. And speaking of brand ambassador, people have actually like, I'm a, I'm a real person. I'm a human being people have actually reached out to me and asked me to show off products that they've designed and made specifically for the Rivian R1T. And so I said, sure, I'll, I'll show you products. In fact, it's been a couple of Chinese companies. And funny story is I, I do own, actually I own two companies in China. And so I said, yeah, um, send it to me, no problem. I, I identify them because they, they message me at nighttime and, and their English is a little bit broken, but I've dealt with that for years. And so I'm, I'm glad to show off those products. A lot of the technology, you know, comes from that part of the world, or at least a lot of the manufacturing happens over there. So I'm excited to show you those, um, but not in this video. That's gonna come a little bit later. I'm still waiting for some stuff to come through and clear customs and, and those details. So when they do, I'll share it with you. There has been a software update. In fact, there have been a couple software updates since I've last shot this video. And I think overwhelmingly positive. Uh, in the past, when I owned a Tesla vehicle, I was fearful of any of the updates that Tesla would do because every time Tesla did an update, I didn't know, maybe they would change the GUI, maybe they would change something, and then you have to go in and figure out, oh, um, what changed? How do I fix it? How do I get back to the setting that I had? Uh, but with Rivian, I haven't had that experience. It's been a very positive experience. And I'm about six foot. I'm, I'm just shy of six foot. And getting out of the truck, I'm afraid of like tearing the seat or over time wearing down the side of the seat. So 
I try to keep it in low mode. So when I get out and, and my family gets out of the truck, they can actually uh, easily, uh, easily get out without having any issues. Now, if you're a big truck guy, you're used to this, you know, just ignore what I'm saying. But they came out with a software update where it actually kneels down. So when you put it in park and you go to get out of the vehicle, it, it brings you down. And it's almost like, have you seen those city buses that kind of come, they lower and then they, for the wheelchair or the ADA, kind of goes at an angle to help the people get in and out? That's cool. And so they came up with that update and I thought, wow, you were reading my mind. I didn't even know how to communicate. I didn't put any tweets out, but I thought, wow, that's really nice. Another thing I see that they made changes to was the driver assist. So when you're driving on the highway, you can do this adaptive lane uh, and this like lane centering. And one thing I, I've seen is they've made updates, but at the same time, I'm still waiting for some more updates to come out where they actually will allow you to use it. Like the lane keep is what I'm talking about. So when I'm driving in town here, they don't allow you to do the lane keep. Tesla and other vehicles like the Mustang, uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E, they allow you to uh, use this adaptive cruise control and lane centering. Um, even Hyundai trucks, all kinds of vehicles have it nowadays. But at the same time, the Rivian does not allow you to do that while you're in the city. And in fact, they only allow you to do it on certain highways. And not only is it on certain highways, it's on certain sections of those certain highways. So it's kind of tough because you want to go on a road trip, even a day trip, and you don't want to have the full, I mean, come on, I'm a little lazy here, but you don't want to have to like have the full responsibility of driving. But of course you do. You get what I'm saying, right? Well, at any rate, you go to do the lane centering and it does not turn on. You click the button, you click it, you click it. And finally, the fourth time, it's like, hey, what are you going to do lane centering? And then 10 minutes later, it turns off. It's so annoying. So I, I really hope that in the future, they'll they'll fix that. Uh, but on a software update, they did mention that they, they did some um, improvements there, but I really didn't see any. One thing I think they also updated, now it's not official, but I've noticed that when I put it in the conserved driving mode, I get more than 2.0 efficiency on miles per kilowatt hour. I've gotten as high as 2.8. Let me put this into perspective. I'm driving a 7,000 pound pickup truck and I'm getting 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. I was not getting that in the Tesla Model S that I had owned previously. So kudos to Rivian. I think that's really awesome. And to be able to come out with that sort of efficiency, I think we're only going to see improvements in the future. So keep up that good work, guys. Another thing I saw was this camping mode. And what that means is when you pull up to a campsite or you're off-roading, you click the camping mode and it'll allow you to basically level the truck. So when you're laying in the truck, it's a little bit more, it's level. I mean, you're laying like in your bed. Um, and there's some also outdoor lighting uh, that happens and takes place. So when you're outside, it's a little bit more friendly and you can see where you're going. Another crazy item, I've made some videos here and I think I complained in the past. Sorry about that. But the the louvers to the air conditioning vents, they kind of have their own personalities and each one has their own personality. That was also addressed in the software updates. So I really like that. They've actually uh, fine tuned those and they work well, as you would expect a, a, a louver to work. Uh, now, one thing I'm still challenged with today is you have to use the screen uh, the touch screen to change the direction of the vents. Um, you know, I thought it was a really cool technological feature, but at the same time, it's, it's something you have to get used to. And after several months, I'm still not wholly and completely used to having to touch the screen to change the direction of the vent. And when you have new riders in the vehicle, they're trying to change the vents and you're, you're quick to like, no, don't touch that. Let me show you how to do it. Because uh, you don't want the, the the vents or the louvers of the air conditioning to break. So that's kind of a tough one. Um, I would like to see those in the future, maybe a manual. I know, right? Going going backwards. But, you know, that's my thought. That's where I'm at right now. Um, and they've also improved the overnight range loss. So the vehicle itself, just sitting, not being plugged in, like in the driveway or you go to an airport, you were losing up to like 15 miles of range uh, driving per night. So they've updated that and they've improved it. Um, also, I have put the truck 
on a website to rent the truck out. Uh, I was kind of curious to see how other people would receive it. And I put it on Turo and I did not have anybody rent it. And so I think I'm grateful that they didn't rent it because this truck is my baby and I really don't want people to rent my truck, but probably the high price tag I put on Turo to rent it, they're not renting it. So I like that. Another thing I found myself doing recently was I used in, in the back in the, the pickup truck uh, in the pickup bed, there is a locking cable. So you can plug it in and I had some stuff in the back of my truck. I had to make some errands and I realized, hey, I'm kind of in an area that looks a little, little sketchy to me. Um, let me, oh yeah, I have one of those locking cables. So I got the cable, I plugged it in, I ran into the store real quick, I did my errands and then I came back and I felt confident knowing that my items were locked to the bed of the pickup truck. I think that was really nice. Before one of my work trips, Rivian called me and said, hey, there's a recall on the Rivian. We need to get your truck in for service immediately. And I was about ready to fly out, you know, to leave town in the airplane. And they said, we need to get this done as soon as possible. And I said, guys, I can drop it off with you. You can have it all next week. I'll be gone. And they said, well, what about tomorrow? I'm thinking like, you mean like tomorrow, like tomorrow? They're like, yeah, we can send somebody out to your house to do the recall. And I thought, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, you're gonna send them out to my house, that's fine. And so we coordinated and scheduled a time and the Rivian dude came out to my house in a Rivian R1T truck. And it took about five to 10 minutes to, to change a pin, I think of some sort of steering item, probably pretty important to your steering and, and the, the safety of the vehicle, but it took them a few minutes and they replaced it. And they also updated or upgraded uh, the firmware on my key. Now, one thing you should know is when you click the key fob, there's a delay on a Rivian and it takes time. It's not like any other vehicle I've owned. That delay, it's kind of long, and so once you accept that's what it is and you plan ahead, like as you're walking to the vehicle, you click it a little bit sooner than you normally would, it's good. But other than that, that delay, it's kind of annoying, especially when you're standing at the door of your truck, clicking the key fob. It's, well, first world problems, I think. But at the same time, it's there. Now, when this Rivian uh, service guy came to my house, he was driving this green R1T and he, he opened the gear tunnel and I said, whoa, what do you got going on there? <clears throat> and he said, oh, let me show you. They actually have retrofitted the gear tunnel. I haven't seen this before. They retrofitted the gear tunnel with several shelves. They were very durable uh, shelves and he had all these locking mechanisms to prevent it from opening, of course, but a lot of tools in there. And I thought, wow, that's awesome. Now I keep my tools in the front of the truck and I have these milk carton baskets kind of keeping them a little bit separated and organized. I can show you that in just a moment. But the way he had this organized was cool. Now he also had the back seat of the Rivian R1T, it was missing. So he didn't have a back seat and he had an additional, he had additional tools inside there. And I thought, wow, this is cool. Do you, do you mind if I make some videos? And he said, oh, no, you, you, you can't make videos. I'm like, please. He's like, nope. <laughs> so I was frustrated because it was really cool to see the tools, but to know that you can do that, you can retrofit it yourself. That's really interesting. They did remove the floor inside the gear tunnel for a little bit more room. And I think they used it for the metal mounting brackets for all of the, the three shelves that were on the one side that I saw. That was really nice. Now, the guy, he was there for a few minutes, like I said, he made changes to the uh, recall that they needed and then they uh, updated my firmware on my, my key fob. Meanwhile, I received this in the mail. I had been waiting for this for a long time and it was my doo -doo 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 key to open up the door. But the problem I have is it doesn't work. And so I mentioned to him, to him I said, hey man, uh, I can't figure out how to get this to open the door. I've put it all over the door handle, door handles on the next door. It's not opening. He said, oh, I think maybe it needs to be programmed. I thought to myself, well, that's weird. I think it's RFID, you have to program it. So he took it and he said that he paired it with my truck for whatever reason through however he does, but I still can't get it to work. 
So I'll show you what I mean. Maybe uh, we can try that in just a moment. I'll put my other key fob inside the house so there's no confusion. We'll try this, but I can't get it to, to open the, the vehicle. And I, I waited. They actually were supposed to give this to me when I took delivery of the truck several months ago. They didn't have it available. No problem. There's a shortage. They sent it to me in the mail and I was excited to have received it. But when I did, it didn't work. I waited and long story short, I still don't think it's very effective. Um, it feels like um, a watch when you put it on. You know that it's there. Um, I don't know if I would actually sleep with it. Maybe if you go camping, it would be something that you wear. Or if you go to a theme park, it would be something you wear. But um, I think I tried wearing it on a daily basis, kind of like a cool kid, uh, you know, friendship bracelet or something, but that just was not gonna work. Now, another thing I've seen over this time of owning the vehicle is the automatic tonneau cover is having challenges. Now, mine, it hasn't broken, but it has stopped working intermittently. Uh, you should know that the automatic tonneau cover actually works with your touch screen and you can open it and close it from inside the truck. But at the same time, it's starting to show signs of stress and it's only been a couple of months. And I know that Rivian is aware of this because they have stopped selling the vehicles with the automatic tonneau cover. They only allow the manual. So uh, I think it's really cool. When I watch other videos about how it breaks down and how it opens up, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's a little bit challenging. I have used the heat, uh, the heated seat feature here and it gets really hot. And I was really concerned with the fabric kind of, I've had other vehicles, <coughs> Tesla, uh, where when you use the heated seat feature, it, it kind of warps the material, the, the leather or uh, you know whatever that's made out of. And so I was afraid of that happening here. It's still only been a couple of months and I have not seen any signs of wear there. So I, I, feel, I feel good about that. And um, well, I haven't cleaned up the vehicle, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. Um, I've taken it on a rally mode. I made a video of that. It was fun. I think I got up to 35 miles an hour. I was doing this off-roading rally mode. Um, let me explain. It was a blast. It was quick to take off. Of course, it's Rivian. Um, but in Manage the Bumps, you didn't realize that you're off-road. Um, I had other passengers in the vehicle, and I, I thought that you know it was maybe a little bit irresponsible of me to take it off-road and to accelerate. So for all intents and purposes, I did not post that video online but the experience there was fun and the truck is still dirty. Uh, I have not washed the truck in a while. Uh, I have other priorities, so I haven't really gotten to that, but I wanted to show you this key fob, show you some other items. And overall, the truck is holding up really well. Um, I have not had any big major issues, uh, small items, but nothing to complain about. And I would still tell you that at almost 7,000 miles on this Rivian R1T truck, it's, it's definitely well worth it. It's a first generation truck. You expect some problems to happen here and there, but I, I think that they did a terrific job and I still stand beside what I've said so far up to 7,000 miles. So let's go take a look outside the vehicle. Let's see if we can use this. I'm gonna lock it. And I didn't actually think I would enjoy having this, this key fob that's kind of like this carabiner. I didn't think it would be cool, but the truth is I really enjoy it because I always have my key attached to me and I never really have to go looking for my key because it's always attached to my pants. Now, we have a door handle, right? Here we go. Where? It's gotta be somewhere inside this logo where I would install that sensor. So you kind of get my point here. I think there's been a big miss. I know a lot about sensors. I do manufacturing of a lot of wearables just like this for very large companies. And I can't figure this one out, guys. Did you put it down here? No. So you get the idea. I'm, I'm fuddling with it here while making this video and it is just not, uh, responsive. No joke. Turn it around. I was told it's probably somewhere right around here where that sensor is. Let me just try this. 
So you get the idea, it's not really opening up for us. Now, again, I've taken it off-road. It's a little bit dirty. I think it's kind of a fun look for some of the people that are serious truckers. They might say, dude, it's no big deal. That's how I do it. Uh, I actually took out a curb and I was so disappointed in myself. Uh, but at the same time, I have the 20 inch all-terrain tires here and I was safe. You can see right here, I took out, took out a curb and I was a little frustrated, but the wheel was unharmed and undamaged there. You guys know that in, oh, I gotta unlock it here. In order to open the gear tunnel, wait for it. Oh, that's pretty fast. It knows I'm around. So you know that in the past I have made a device here and I wanted to share that with you. Um, I actually scratched up the vehicle when I was doing that. A little sad, but you know, use. Um, so when I was telling you that the service vehicle they took out the floor here, but they also took out this floor as well. So you can kind of look back in the video and when I was talking about that, you can see what they did there. But I really love the gear tunnel, it's very handy. And also the dude from the service said, you can remove this as well. Now it's plastic, it's snapped in. Uh, I was actually scratching it with my, my little shelf that I had built, but you can pull it straight up and it comes right off. Like, whoa, seriously? Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm doing it one-handed here for the very first time on camera. And he showed me on his service truck. I didn't dare do it on mine, but I just did, right there. Push that back. Now, this was the device that I made. <clears throat> Non-judgment, I was trying to throw together a video, trying to do it really quick. I had purchased several rails. Uh, these rails I purchased online, and they came from overseas. Those are about four feet. I think they're 48 inches. Um, and I had one of my team people uh, design this for me. And basically it was the gear tunnel. I had some people ask me to make that available to them. So yes, I will make it available. I did cut this area out because it makes it easier to fit with the lock. Um, and I kind of threw this, it's really rough, but I'll make, I'll make the files available to you. So if you want to make your own, uh, you can do that. Uh, look for those links a little bit later. And when you go inside, now I think I had mentioned this in the past, but this is how I store my tools inside here. Everyone has their own collection of tools, what have you, but I was cleaning out my garage and I wanted to throw these little cartons out, but this is how my tools are currently collected. No big surprises there. And I actually had purchased these, these rails for the gear tunnel and they were too small. So I went to send them back, but because I was traveling, I missed my kind of expiration of returning those. Now I have a car seat back here cause I have a little guy and he loves, well, he doesn't love, but he's, he's big and he kicks the back of, of the seat here. And so it's kind of wearing down a little bit, but it's not too bad. I tell him to please don't kick it and he's mindful. But at the same time, I think we have kind of space constraints going on there. By the way, I, I wear a suit uh, from time to time, and in the suit, I, I keep my carabiner keychain, so uh, kind of my own style. But it's it's a little dirty inside. I haven't cleaned it up for you at all, um, but that's that's how the truck is. Now let's go ahead and open this. I'm afraid of opening the tonneau cover because it makes there it is. It broke on us, right? I mean, no magic happening here. That's what's happening with these tonneau covers. And so I'm gonna bring it back. So click it again, maybe. This time what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click the button and I'm gonna use my hand to push it back. I'm assisting the automatic tonneau cover. I watched a video about how this is designed. It's really cool. Basically, you, you have this area, let me show you. You have this area right here inside. So you got, you got the kind of ceiling inside the gear tunnel and this area right back here. It's basically a tube that that whole entire tonneau cover folds up inside. So it breaks down, breaks apart and, and stacks itself layer by layer. And then when it opens, it pulls itself out and un, unstacks itself. Really cool concept. Whoever designed that did a great job. 
it's spring loaded. So right now there's a spring pushing up and there's a motorized gear um, kind of configuration pushing the whole thing out. But I think if they were to do another version, they have to rethink about that and how it comes together. I really don't open the tonneau cover more than I have to because as you saw, it kind of stops working or breaks on itself. And I, I try to assist it as well. I'm not trying to accelerate the service I need to do on the vehicle, but the point is, uh, you know, they stopped selling those. <clears throat> I still use this right here. I still use this and then my other hand to close the tailgate. Um, I still don't try not to touch, touch the paint there. Overall, vehicle's great. I would say buy one, get one. Um, if it's within your budget, I think it's fantastic. Again, I'm parked and part of this kneeling mode here is the vehicle is really low. It's kind of unusually low when you compare it to other vehicles, but uh, it lifts up when you start driving as well. A little dirt happening here. I have to, uh, Clean it up. This is the vehicle. It's really easy to clean, but I just have not made my way to a vacuum. And overall, I've got some notes there. Overall, I enjoy it. I would say get it. And um, if you enjoy this video, I appreciate it. If you would like, subscribe and share it with a friend. Thank you. Have a nice day.